Hello from Pemba Island. It's the lesser known sister island of Zanzibar and this is what Zanzibar used to be before. While Zanzibar has been very, very commercialized, this place is still very local and it's amazing. It's mostly forested. It smells so fresh and nice here. And the best part about coming to this place, no one's tried to sell me anything yet, which is amazing. I mean, I've been missing that for a long time. I'm going to the north of the island, which has some really beautiful beaches. There's also a beautiful forest called Ngezi. We will also see some flying foxes, which are these beautiful bats that fly in the evening to go get some food. People here are really, really nice and friendly. Getting here is a bit of a challenge though. You need to take a flight either from Dar es Salaam or Zanzibar. Both are quite easy, small flights. So I would recommend taking a flight even though it's slightly more expensive. My return ticket to and from Zanzibar cost me 150 US dollars. The first stop for the day is Wete, which is a small town. Right before the port is this little road and you see a lot of flying foxes which we made the mistake of coming in the morning, so they're usually flying in the evening around sunset time. 6, 6.30 is a good time, so don't come here like me in the middle of the day, they're sleeping. This place is just incredible. It's much smaller, much more raw, much more natural. The people are so much nicer. They don't try to sell you things. They're genuinely nice, they're curious, they come, they wave at you, they shout jambo or assalamu alaikum. One guy even wanted to take a photo with me. So we came to Ngezi Forest. It actually leads all the way to the beach. So it's quite nice. And they also have flying fox hair. If you missed it in wet air, or you don't want to go all the way just for some flying foxes. The other good thing is most of the coastline is not dotted with resorts like you have in Zanzibar. So it's amazing to see beach after beach after beach. You can just, you have a pick of the entire island. There's so many gorgeous beaches here. I love how raw and unexplored this place is. This little cafe is not even on Google. But we had like a really nice, simple chipsy my eye. By the way, whenever in doubt, eat chipsy my eye. It's chips with eggs. I don't have the words to describe where I am. This beach doesn't even have a proper name. It's called Manta Ray because of the resort that's on the beach. Not the only one, by the way. Look at this place. This is the northern tip of Pemba Island. And this beautiful water is super clean and clear. I mean, look, you can see all the way down without any problems. It's just incredible. I, like I said, I just don't have the words.
this day to in Pemba. This is the most touristy I've ever looked in my life, but the linen shirt feels really nice. So we're going to Misali Island, Bumba, and then we're going to Fundu Lagoon for the sunset. And it looks like it's gonna be a wonderful day. The weather is really nice. Sali Island, which is about an hour away from Pemba. We took a boat. It is a World Heritage Site and for a very good reason. I mean, look at that. The deep blue you see is all coral. Pemba is just so different from everywhere I've been already. This is beautiful beyond words. on the other side on the turtle beach and it's called turtle beach because there's a lot of turtles that lay the eggs here let me show you one ba -ba 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 -ba. aren't they cute basically we just walked through the forest for about 20 minutes and then we got here and this side is incredible and they have another island called west island behind me Don't forget, there's a couple of caves here which are in the middle of nowhere and definitely worth a visit. Between Pemba and Zanzibar, I would highly recommend choosing Pemba. One other thing I really loved about this place is how cheap it is. I mean, the amount of money I spent in Zanzibar in one day on excursions, I spent about the same money on three days in Pemba. from Fundu Lagoon. Conde asked apparently voted this as one of the best lagoons or beaches in the world. I don't know the exact category, but I can tell you Misali is much better than this. Another problem I found here is 
the mosquitoes they were literally biting me off so i had to come into the water which is not a bad outcome but you don't want to be bitten by mosquitoes right this place is still pretty great if you want to come for an amazing sunset which we're gonna do now It's my last day in Pemba and we are today heading to the lighthouse. I just decided to get a little bit of rest today morning and now we're going to the lighthouse after lunch. We stopped on the way to the lighthouse at Kwata, which is a small islet. It still amazes me how many different types of sand. This one is coarse and um, sort of golden brown. I mean, it's crazy how different the islands are from each other. And they're right next to each other, like from Makani to here. It took us about 15 minutes only. Crazy, isn't it? Look at this place is a bit creepy as well but super beautiful of the lighthouse but the best part is we have a gate but no walls I love this so cute lighthouse of Matumbi which I just climbed. Now I am at this beach for the sunset. Um, I came here with two other travelers so we're gonna share the beach. <laughs> 